Appendicitis is defined as an inflammation of the inner lining of the vermiform appendix that spreads to its other parts. It is a very common and urgent surgical illness with variable manifestations. Despite diagnostic and therapeutic advancement in medicine, appendicitis remains a clinical emergency and is one of the more common causes of acute abdominal pain. Before we begin our discussion on appendicitis itself, we may recall the normal anatomy of the appendix. Appendix is contained within the visceral peritoneum. It is a worm-like extension of the cecum, so-called vermiform appendix. It is supplied by the appendicular artery, which is a branch of the ileocolic artery that emerges from the superior mesenteric artery. Appendicular artery runs through a serosal sheet of the peritoneum, called mesoappendix, to supply the appendix. On a cross-section, the appendix will appear like this. Submucosa of the appendix contains lymphoid tissue. And the mucosa consists of columnar epithelium. Appendix has no fixed position. Therefore, identification of its position is extremely important in surgical procedures. Commonly found positions include retrocecal, subsecal, pelvic, preileal, and postileal positions. Now let's discuss about the etiology and pathogenesis of appendicitis. Appendicitis is caused by obstruction of the appendiceal lumen for a variety of reasons. Regardless of the cause, obstruction leads to increased pressure within the lumen. This in turn results in continuous secretion and stagnation of fluid and mucus within. At the same time, intestinal bacteria within the appendix multiply, leading to recruitment of leukocytes to the site. This will initiate an inflammatory reaction and formation of pus, leading to associated symptoms of appendicitis. If appendiceal obstruction and inflammation persists, intraluminal pressure rises ultimately above that of the appendiceal veins, leading to venous outflow obstruction and thrombosis. As a consequence, appendiceal wall ischemia begins, resulting in a loss of epithelial integrity and allowing bacterial invasion of the appendiceal wall. This will eventually lead to gangrene and perforation of the appendix. If this process continues, periappendicular abscesses and peritonitis may occur. Most common causes of appendiceal obstruction include the following. Lymphoid hyperplasia, secondary to various inflammatory and infectious diseases. Some of these diseases include Crohn's disease, gastroenteritis, amebiasis, measles, respiratory infections, and mononucleosis. Another very common cause of appendiceal obstruction is fecaliths, which are hard, stony masses made up of fecal debris and calcium salts. Certain parasites also can get lodged in the appendiceal lumen and cause obstruction. Especially enterobius, commonly known as pinworms, strongyloids stercorilus, and schistosoma species. Occasionally, foreign materials such as tongue stud, staples, activated charcoal, and various types of seeds can be ingested and get lodged within the appendiceal lumen, causing obstruction. Certain neoplasms in the gastrointestinal tract can also sometimes cause obstruction, leading to appendicitis. Other less common causes of appendicitis include actinomycosis, intestinal tuberculosis, infection with adenovirus and cytomegalovirus, especially during childhood, and histoplasmosis. Now let's discuss about the signs and symptoms of appendicitis. In appendicitis, position of the appendix, age of the patient, and degree of inflammation make the clinical presentation highly variable. The most common symptom of appendicitis is abdominal pain. Typically begins as periumbilical or epigastric pain, migrating to the right lower quadrant of the abdomen. This pain migration is the most discriminating feature in the patient's history, with a high sensitivity and specificity. Patients usually lie down, flex their hips, and draw their knees up to reduce movements and to avoid worsening their pain. Other associated symptoms may include nausea and vomiting, anorexia, urinary urgency and frequency, and fever, which is seen in about 40% of patients. Some atypical symptoms of appendicitis include diarrhea, indigestion, and malaise. 
The duration of symptoms is less than 48 hours in approximately 80% of adults, but tends to be longer in elderly patients and in those with perforation. A careful physical examination is essential in patients with suspected appendicitis. Most importantly, gastrointestinal, genitourinary, and respiratory systems should be evaluated. Most important physical examination findings in appendicitis include the following. McBurney's sign, which is characterized by rebound tenderness at McBurney's point. McBurney's point is located one-thirds the distance from the right anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus. Rebound tenderness is the pain felt upon removal of pressure, rather than application of pressure on the abdomen. Rovsing's sign is the pain elicited in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen when palpating the left side of the abdomen. Dunphy's sign is characterized by a sharp pain in the right lower quadrant, elicited by a voluntary cough. And this sign may suggest an ongoing localized peritonitis. Obturator sign can be elicited when the inflamed appendix comes in contact with the obturator internus muscle. To elicit this sign, patient's right lower limb is flexed at the knee joint, with flexion and internal rotation at the hip joint. So is sign can be elicited when the inflamed appendix is located in the rectocecal position. Here the sign is elicited by passive extension at the hip joint. Now let's discuss about the diagnosis of appendicitis. Patients with appendicitis may not have the reported classic clinical picture in about 45% of cases. In such cases, imaging studies are important in diagnosing appendicitis. Laboratory tests are not specific for appendicitis, but may be helpful in the diagnosis. In blood tests, most of the patients with appendicitis will have an elevated white blood cell count, typically more than 10,500 cells per microliter, with a neutrophil predominance. But this is highly nonspecific and unreliable, especially in infants, elderly patients, and pregnant women. In addition, C-reactive protein level is also increased in most patients with appendicitis. Urinalysis should be performed in patients with suspected appendicitis to rule out possible urinary tract causes of abdominal pain. Although mild pyuria may occur in acute appendicitis, severe pyuria indicates a urinary tract infection. For women of childbearing age, a urinary beta-HCG test should be performed to rule out ectopic pregnancy. Several investigators have created diagnostic scoring systems to predict the likelihood of acute appendicitis. In these systems, a finite number of clinical variables is elicited from the patient and each is given a numeric value. Then, the sum of these values is used. The best known of these scoring systems is the Mantrell's score, also known as the Alvarado score. Here, the letter M stands for the migration of pain. A, for anorexia. N, for nausea and vomiting. T, for tenderness. R, for rebound tenderness in the right lower quadrant. E, for elevated temperature. L, for leukocytosis. And S, for shift of the white blood cell count to the left, which means that there are more premature white blood cells. Tenderness and leukocytosis are given two points each. And all the others are given one point each. Patients with a score of seven, or above should receive immediate surgical therapy. And patients with a score of 4 to 6 should undergo CT evaluation for appendicitis. Imaging tests are not always indicated for every patient with suspected appendicitis. Because the diagnosis of appendicitis is usually made on the basis of a patient's clinical history, physical examination, and laboratory studies. Most of the time, Patients who present with typical symptoms will undergo immediate surgery, without imaging studies, to prevent appendiceal rupture and development of peritonitis. Such imaging is advisable in patients with atypical symptoms, such as infants and small children, and elderly. MRI, X-ray, CT, and ultrasound all can be used for the diagnosis of acute appendicitis. Finally, let's discuss about the treatment. Appendectomy remains the only curative treatment for appendicitis. In addition, both prophylactic and post-operative antibiotics are indicated for patients with acute appendicitis.